friends, welcome to our show. Lot of women are facing various health problems these days. One of them is adenomyosis, which is a very common problem in women healthcare. Let me introduce Dr. Pradeep Mule, senior consultant interventional radiologist practicing in New Delhi, India. Welcome to our show, Dr. Mule. Uh, so, Dr. Mule, there is a lot of uh, women health problems which are very common these days. Adenomyosis is one of uh, those problems. So, I would like you to tell our audience what is exactly adenomyosis. Uh, see, the adenomyosis is the non-cancerous conditions mm -hmm. and which mimic like a uterine fibroids. Okay. Most of the time, the symptoms of the adenomyosis are very similar to the uterine fibroid. Okay. When you talk about the what is exactly the adenomyosis, mm -hmm. you know the internal lining of the uterus, mm -hmm. which the cells from the lining, which penetrate into the muscles of the uterus, okay. and that grows inside. Once okay. once this grows inside, the mm -hmm. size of the uterus that become a little larger, and once this like uh, menses cycle comes, mm -hmm. so because of the bleeding, the bleeding also comes into the this lining into the muscle wall. So that swell, swells up. That's, that, that's why the uterus also the swells off. Mm -hmm. And because of this uh, bleeding into the muscles, mm -hmm. so there's some irritation comes and something comes, right? And because of that, the fibrotic tissue develops. Once the, this uh, diffusely go into the muscular wall of the uterus, mm -hmm. so this may be sometimes the only the one area, so mm -hmm. that is the focal adenomyosis. Okay. May sometimes this happen in the so many one or two or three or four areas. Diffused. This is the diffuse, diffuse, right? So this may be the diffuse. In diffuse, normally when you see the uterus size is become around like 12 week pregnancy size. Okay. Right, and how to like know that, that this is the fibroid, right? Mm -hmm. This is the fibroid and that this is adenomyosis. The adenomyosis, when it touch the abdomen, mm -hmm. so this always be the little tender and the painful. Okay. So this is adenomyosis. Okay. Uh, how to differentiate between the symptoms of adenomyosis and fibroid? What are the symptoms, particular symptoms of adenomyosis? Uh, in adenomyosis, one is the very like uh, different symptom from the uh, fibroids. Mm -hmm. The intense pain comes. Okay. Once the menses is going to be start like three days, four days, five days before the mm -hmm. pain starts, mm -hmm. that's a triggering point, right? And that time we assume that this is adenomyosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, now talking about the diagnosis, how to diagnose that one is suffering from adenomyosis and not with fibroid? Uh, see that when the patient comes with the heavy bleeding mm -hmm. and the clots and the intense pain during the menses and before the menses. So normally the, in a gynae examination, the uterus size is enlarged okay. and uh, the tenderness also there. Tenderness means like when you touch the uterus on examination, mm -hmm. that is a little painful. So okay. this is the one the manually you can diagnose also. Mm -hmm. But furthermore, you wanted to diagnose mm -hmm. this thing, so you need a transvaginal ultrasonography. Okay, the internal, yeah, okay. yeah, internal uh, ultrasonography. Mm -hmm. Internal ultrasonography, that is a very cheap way to a less expensive also so you can diagnose very easily also and this modality is available most of the places mm -hmm. most. okay if any confusion comes on ultrasonography like this is the fibroid or adenomyosis mm -hmm. then you can ask the patient for a mri mri is the magnetic resonant imaging mm -hmm. mri is the little higher modality and little more expensive also mm -hmm. but mr on adenomyosis is the really great Okay. Because you can do on MRI the tissue characterization. You can differentiate that this is the fibroid, this is the adenomyosis. Okay. Even you can classify on MRI the adenomyosis, the type of adenomyosis. Okay. Is it diffuse adenomyosis or maybe the multifocal adenomyosis mm -hmm. or maybe it's just the one spot of the adenomyosis. Okay. So MRI is the wonderful tool to diagnose the adenomyosis. Okay, now uh, uh, we can see that few few women are really very healthy. They look really very healthy. Their lifestyle is very good. They go for regular exercise and they uh, work like absolutely fine women. They have great stamina, but they are diagnosed with uh, such diseases like adenomyosis. So what are the basic causes for this disease? Although till now is the not a known diagnosis. Mm -hmm. No, no other cause is there for adenomyosis. But a lot of doctors, they assume that why the adenomyosis develop mm -hmm. because of the caesarean section, one of the one cause, the okay. caesarean section. Mm -hmm. During the caesarean section, when you cut the internal cavity mm -hmm. to take out the baby at the time of the delivery, mm -hmm. so that time the internal lining may not go 
exactly like the natural one. All right. So that time some breaks are there into the lining of the uh -huh. uterus. So this lining sometimes breaks and the cells that migrate into the muscular wall. They start growing inside yeah, start the wall. Growing. So okay. like another cause is the like uh, when you know that like uh, after the delivery, mm -hmm. the postpartum period is there. The recovery time is yes. the one month, two month, three months. Mm -hmm. That time sometimes the women they don't know that the internal lining having the, some kind of the inflammation. Okay. Some kind of infection. Uh -huh. So these, because of these infection, the lining structure that breaks and these lining cells that go into the muscular wall. Okay. So these are the like two co common causes are there: postpartum inflammation or maybe sometimes the severe infection also. Then how does the lifestyle has a, its impact on a woman's uh, uh, capability of developing adenomyosis inside its uterus? Uh, see the lifestyle when you talk, how this impact on the, your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, when a woman having the intense pain, that is the horrible things mm -hmm. during the menses and before the menses. Yes. So five days plus another the seven days that mm -hmm. goes around in a month, painful time around ten to fifteen days. Yes. Right. So thus you cannot do the normal day to day activity also. Mm -hmm. If you are working woman, then also is more difficult to work also mm -hmm. to concentrate in your work. Mm -hmm. Right. So these overall like this impact in the, your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Even like some guest or something is coming in your home, right? Mm -hmm. So you always feel, oh no, I am so much in pain. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I handle this all the situation? Mm -hmm. On if a person having a longer time, this one, right? A one year, two year, three year, four year, right? Some women they really survive on this simple tablets, pain medication tablets and everything. But see, I seen that around like twenty percent of the women they need the injectable medication to control their pain. They they they've got so intense pain. Yeah, so intense. Mm -hmm. so, so during the, if this goes every month, mm -hmm. they may sometimes develop some uh, depression also, okay. some anxiety also come. Uh -huh. They always feel the little little helplessness. Okay. Like ten percent of the women they have the painful. Husband and wife relationship. Exactly. So they try to avoid that also uh -huh. because they know that once they gone through this one, so they may get the pain during the intercourse and after the intercourse for period that one or two three days, right? That's all the pain. Mm -hmm. So these also is the kind of the frustrating. But you see the overall mm -hmm. the adenomyosis is the really for a treatment also for a person also mm -hmm. those suffering by this is mm -hmm. really frustrating. Yes, because it is extremely painful extremely and one painful. cannot tolerate any even, pain. even the painful also and mm -hmm. some women like eighty percent of the women they have the heavy bleeding on the cloth also. Yeah. So you have the blood hemoglobin that goes down every month. Mm -hmm. Whatever you take the nutrition and other things and next month you'll drain out. Yeah, it even worsen up the, worsen up the situation. Yeah, okay. Talking about the treatments. So uh, what are the treatments? For adenomyosis, how it can be cured? Uh, when you talk about the adenomyosis treatment, mm -hmm. the hundred percent treatment is the removal of the uterus. But in young women, how can we? I mean, like uh, menstrual pain is quite uh, common, but uh, if it is intense and the woman or the girl is pretty young, so this is not the only option to remove and the uterus. Another, another drawback is there: the adenomyosis comes in the younger age. Okay. When you talk about the hysterectomy, hundred percent pain free, but that. Is not really possible for a younger woman. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you talk about the, some other kind of the treatments like mm -hmm. the medical management, uh -huh. on many medical management we say that okay, take the some hormone pills to stop the your menses, so you, you are the symptom free for a one month, two month, three months, four months. Mm -hmm. But these kind of the like the hormonal medication, you are not supposed to take for a longer time. For a longer time, yeah. One month, two month, three months, but these are the hormonal medication. These having the some their own side effects. Yeah, your body gets used yeah, to it, and yeah, these yeah, are yeah. sort of steroids so, and so all. Yeah, that's why is not indicated the hormone for a longer time more mm -hmm. than a three months. Okay. Right. So these are the like the temporary solution, mm -hmm. medical management. If a pain is there, okay, fine, you can take a lot of now the new generation pain medications are there. You can take that also control for some time. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I'm seeing that some other non-surgical treatment also available. Okay, despite removing uh, the mm -hmm. uterus, because yeah. The, yeah. this generally happen in younger women, yeah, as you yeah. said. So yes, I was very curious about doing those uh, non-surgical treatments. How can it be cured by non-surgical treatments? Uh, see the non-surgically when you see that like some another copper tea comes, okay. that is also known as the marina. Mm -hmm. Right, marina is a copper tea which is coated with the hormone. 
Okay. Right. If they insert, so that around 30 to 40 percent of the women for a temporarily for a one year, two year, they may get some benefited also due to pain and the heavy breathing. Mm -hmm. But if a diffuse adenomyosis is there, the, this marina insertion also don't work also. So some other non-surgical treatments are there like uterine artery embolization, the technique is there. Mm -hmm. That is that works really wonder and that gives you the accuracy after the treatment, right? In the diagnostic capability, treatment wise, when you see the percentage wise, this comes around 95 to 97 percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dr. Mule, as you have earlier told about the non-surgical treatments, the same treatment is for fibroid also. Talking about adenomyosis, uh, how is it beneficial in this disease? Uh, uterine artery embolization definitely is the much more benefited mm -hmm. uh, uh, by the technique uh, uterine artery embolization mm -hmm. because the any type of the adenomyosis like a focal, multifocal or a diffuse adenomyosis can be handled by the uterine artery embolization. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about this procedure, right, this procedure need the just the 24 hour hospitalization uh -huh. and this not need any surgical scar. Okay. Even in this technique is no blood loss is there mm -hmm. and uh, you can do the procedure like in a 20 to 30 minutes time. Mm -hmm. This procedure is exactly the similar the way we do the angiography. Mm -hmm. And in angiography also like we enter from the groin area. Yes. Uh, so the groin area, the entry point is the, exactly the way you the blood sample that much the small nick comes into the skin only. Okay. And a small thin tube is there uh -huh. and the tube we take into the uterine mm -hmm. arteries and we see the how much the abnormal mm -hmm. blood supply is there for adenomyosis. Mm -hmm. And these abnormal blood supply are blocked by the one medicine comes actually that is called as the polyvinyl alcohol particles. We block by that. Yeah, so this is the polyvinyl alcohol PVA particles. Mm -hmm. This blocks that, and when the, once the next cycle comes, mm -hmm. so this won't bleed because of the bleeding before into the muscular wall. That's why they have the intense pain and the heavy bleeding. Mm -hmm. So once you block these arteries, right? So 95 to 97, 98 percent of the women they experience the next month is the no pain okay. or a less pain or a less. Heavy bleeding. So it basically blocks the blood flow into the wall. In, in, into the adenomyotic area. Adenomyotic area. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. So what is the success rate of uh, such non-surgical uh, Success practice? rate for adenomyosis when you do in, uh, by the uterine artery embolization that comes around 95 to 97, 98 percent. That's actually. great. But sometimes I see in diffuse adenomyosis, mm -hmm. those leaving the massive adenomyotic area, Nymaric. so they may 1%, they may not get the good results okay, also. Okay, okay. Uh, now talking about this particular practice, so uh, is this uh, able to cure any other diseases despite adenomyosis? Uh, by uterine artery embolization, you can treat the multi single or a multiple fibroid also. Fibroids, you can yes. treat the adenomyosis also. Mm -hmm. You can treat the postpartum hemorrhage. You know that like after the delivery, the heavy bleeding starts. So that time, this procedure is the really the works wonder. How does that work in postpartum hemorrhage? Uh, see the post during the pregnancy, during the, the time of the labor, when the heavy bleeding comes and when you block these arteries. Yeah. Right, so the bleeding stops. Okay. And during the postpartum hemorrhage, the bleeding sometimes comes the very massive also. Yes. But I seen that like when you see in our country, mm -hmm. the postpartum death is the very high incidence. Yes, exactly. Right, but this technique is not available in the good number of the hospitals. Mm -hmm. But those are the, this place are the available this kind of the procedure today. You can save the woman's life also. Okay. So now uh, talking about the advantages of the uterine. Uh, artery embolization and adenomyosis so what are the advantages over the surgical practice uh, see the advantage is the this not required the general anesthesia okay this required just the one day hospitalization mm -hmm. this required the just the tiny nick into the skin so the no, no scar, cut no scar no cut no scar comes on that mm -hmm. and in fact uh, in uh, uterine artery embolization in adenomyosis mm -hmm. there no blood loss is there mm -hmm. so you're not required to give a any kind of the blood transfusion or something right mm -hmm. and in this one because you're not doing any cut or something right so the no scarring comes internally also mm -hmm. the scar is not there adhesions is not there and when you see that like the uterus is retained like this only not remove the uterus mm -hmm. so the emotionally 
also the women feel they are really happy you know okay my yeah, the, the family is yeah, intact the family is intact and okay. they always feel they know my integral part of the uterus yes. remains with them yeah because that so that is, makes yeah, that this there is a feeling really important also to regulate their hormones and other things also mm -hmm. okay uh, doctor generally i've heard that uh, women suffering from adenomyosis are not able to conceive because generally it happens at a very young age So after undergoing the UAE treatment for adenomyosis is it uh, possible for a woman to conceive uh, see the uh, as i told that like adenomyosis having the various types of the adenomyosis focal multifocal and the diffuse adenomyosis mm. the focal and multifocal adenomyosis when the women they go through the uterine artery embolization they really get conceive also okay that's But a good conceiving, news conceiving time is like they may take hmm. around like 3 months to 4 months and 5 months time mm -hmm. but i seen that those having the diffuse adenomyosis hmm. for them is a really tough to conceive also 5% 2% 3% of the women those having the diffuse adenomyosis for them is really difficult to conceive hmm. okay anyway uh, this after this treatment uh, this is really a good news for such women who are unable to conceive because uh, they are having adenomyosis but actually one thing <coughs> uh, actually to those patient at least by this technique 97 to 98 percent of the women they get the symptomatic relief okay. one they are the totally the intense pain uh -huh. heavy bleeding mm -hmm. clots that disappears good that's at least they have the peaceful life okay so that's a relief for such patients yeah, yeah. uh first question would be that after undergoing this non surgical treatment after how many days they can join their office uh, see the when you talk about the working woman mm -hmm. 90% right what i feel whether they work in a home or work in a office mm -hmm. or are the working actually yeah. not the 90% yes. i would say that is a 100% woman they are working actually exactly right? but when you see the recovery uh, wise right recovery wise it takes around 1 to 3 days okay so what are other non surgical treatments you do Uh, when you see the like in a woman healthcare, there's so many non-surgical treatments are available. Mm -hmm. But still, I believe that uh, good number of the non-surgical treatments mm -hmm. which is not known to the woman. Okay. In this one, like a fibroid, mm -hmm. uterus fibroid, which is the very common condition mm -hmm. that can be treated by the non-surgical treatment. Another technique, uh, another uh, disease is there, the pelvic congestion syndrome. in pelvic congestion syndrome the pelvic pain comes mm -hmm. right pelvic pain pain comes and that is the boring kind of the pain comes in the lower abdomen mm -hmm. this is the a misdiagnosed condition mm -hmm. lot of people lot of time when you do the ultrasound or is something do you not able to catch this disease mm -hmm. for a pelvic congestion syndrome we do the uh, pelvic congestion syndrome embolization Okay this technique also is available nowadays in this good number of the places okay. i know that the pelvic congestion syndrome is very common very common condition mm -hmm. but most of the time is misdiagnosed all right or not able to diagnose also on that time okay some other techniques are there some other disease are there mm -hmm. like a varicose vein normally when see the in a woman right after the pregnancy some dilated vein and other thing comes in the their leg mm -hmm. and these also produce some kind of the problem Mm -hmm. what kind of the problem comes right the swelling comes in the leg mm -hmm. dilated vein also comes lot of spider vein they are able to see that this is pain is there mm -hmm. they say after one hour two hour standing job and the two that they get the some swelling also in their leg mm -hmm. so for this treatment till now all the surgeries goes mm -hmm. but now you can do by the radio frequency ablation that is the latest technique similar to the laser mm -hmm. but rfa that having the more the success rate okay so this technique also can be done in a very close way dr mule i must appreciate what you are doing uh, for such uh, people who uh, are not really very ready for, to undergo the surgical treatment and uh, really thanks for sharing this much information this much important information for the people suffering uh, from such kind of problems thank you yeah thank thank you very much